First story. Delusional husband neglects his pregnant wife, favoring his daughter, then accuses her of competing with his daughter, excludes her from bonding, abandons her for pregnancy checkups, and now wonders why his wife is divorcing him. Plus wife's response. Ada for resenting my husband since I got pregnant. IF, 28 have been with Michael M, 41 for the last 8 years. We got engaged one and a half years ago and decided to get married once my master's degree was done. Michael has a daughter F, 12 who lives across the country. I found out I was pregnant four and a half months ago. When I told Michael, he looked shocked. I suggested we postpone the wedding, but he said no. In fact, let's have the wedding earlier. We can have a small courthouse wedding, and once the baby is born, we will have a nice party. I reluctantly agreed. We set a date, I got a nice dress, and my friend did my hair and makeup. I showed up and saw that Michael didn't bother wearing a clean shirt. He wore his old jeans, didn't shave or shower, and wore his old t-shirt. I asked him if he really wanted to marry me. He said yes, let's go, hurry up. After the ceremony, we went for lunch, and he told me his daughter is moving in with us, so it's best to cancel our honeymoon baby moon that was supposed to be in September. I was shocked and asked why. He said he can't just abandon his kid for a week. Ella is moving across the country. Everything is new to her. We need to bond with her. Get over yourself. You are going to be a mom. How about a little empathy? I just stayed quiet. He went back to work, and I went back to my place to pack my stuff alone, because I was officially moving in with him. Now that Ella has moved in, I feel completely unseen. He spends all his free time doing stuff with her, and I'm not invited. He says his kid has been through a lot, and he needs to bond with her. I pretty much spend all my time alone, either at school or at my part-time job. I go to all my baby appointments alone. Today, he told me he is taking her to Disneyland because September is her birthday. I feel so petty, but September was supposed to be our honeymoon, I asked, and I guess I'm not invited to the trip, right? He said you are always invited, but this time I want it to be me and her only. It's the first time I get to be with her on her birthday. I just left for school and cried. Why is he punishing me for getting pregnant? Things were great before, and all of a sudden, I don't even exist anymore. Ada for resenting my husband. Am I too needy and unreasonable? Comments. Snack in Airgarden. Husband. You mean the guy you quickly married in court, who didn't bother to wear a clean shirt? Husband. Either you start setting your boundaries in this relationship now, or you will be a doormat forever. Did you know his daughter will be living with you? Did you agree to that? Were it to me, I'd file for a divorce well. I wouldn't get married like this in the first place. But what's done is done. And I would only do a proper do-over if he persuaded me well enough with his care. Otherwise, why be responsible for three kids? NTA. OP. No, I had no clue. He just informed me during the lunch. Leave Emil Zernedjit. Babe. That is not how a loving husband would approach such a topic. And his comments on top of that. Jesus it seems like he thinks that now that you're married and pregnant, there is no way you'll leave, and he can treat you, however. That is not right. You deserve better. There are a million red flags in this post. Make sure your support system is tight. Talk to people about possibly staying with them. Put money to the side. And then, only when you have a plan, sit him down and tell him that if things don't change, you're gone. KH 3013 How is that not something he felt needed to be discussed with you first? I mean, you're married. He can't just make unilateral decisions like that. He's also been sitting in this for days. Maybe weeks before he so graciously told you right after you fell in the marriage trap. This guy stinks, OP. I'm sorry to say that. But get an annulment and raise a baby on your own. He clearly doesn't see you as an equal. OP, yes. Apparently he had been discussing this with Ella's mom for weeks. Nope. I wasn't even aware underscore. Underscore underscore lavender. That's not a marriage. Contact a lawyer ASAP. Reach out to your friends and family for help. Judgment. NTA. Husband posts. Ada for prioritizing my kid over my new wife. One day later. My wife took it upon herself to write her side yesterday. She left to stay with her co-worker to clear her mind before making any decision. Since then, many of my friends have read her post, contacted me, and called me a monster. Here is my side. And I'm genuinely wondering if I'm the bad guy here. I have been with my wife for the last eight years. She got pregnant while we were engaged. I suggested having a small courthouse wedding and then a nice party when the baby was born. I have a daughter from a previous relationship. When her mother was pregnant, she left to stay with her parents across the country. 
I only met her maybe once a year. I was never involved in her life. Before our courthouse wedding, her mother messaged me that my daughter was moving in with me because she was pregnant and thought Ella, my daughter, should be with me. When I told my wife after our wedding, she didn't say anything. I told her that I was postponing our honeymoon since I couldn't leave my girl, who had just moved in and was feeling abandoned, just to go on some trip. My wife didn't say anything. Since Ella moved in, I have tried my best to make her feel welcome. I take her to extracurricular activities. She sees a therapist that I take her to, and I take her fishing with me. My wife has not only been very distant, but also decided not to communicate with either of us. She hasn't put any effort into connecting with my daughter. They speak maybe a few words a day. My wife is always quiet, which makes things awkward. On top of that, she is jealous of my daughter and expects me to baby her because she is pregnant. She suggests crashing. I say no each time in on any father-daughter activity without realizing my kid has been through so much. She expects me to come to all her baby appointments. I explain that I'm working full-time and doing all these extracurricular activities with Ella. Plus, she can just show me the ultrasound pictures later. It's not like there is anything I can do. My presence is not necessary for these appointments. Now, here is the thing. Am I an arsy hole for trying to be there for my child? For putting my child first? For expecting my wife to be an adult and not expecting me to baby her? She is using her pregnancy to be emotional and guilt trip me because she is jealous of a literal child. Comments. Catchalker. Y.T.A. Dude. Making this judgment without reading your wife's post. I get that your daughter got dumped on you, and you're trying to make sure she's okay. Guess what? She got dumped on your wife as well. And instead of trying to integrate the family, you're freezing your wife out. She's quiet and distant because you've isolated her from your little dad daughter bubble. On top of this, she's pregnant. Of course she expects you to come to the baby appointments. She's crying out for you to demonstrate any kind of love or affection for her and your second child. So yeah, without knowing anything she said in her post. I can see why your friends are calling you out on your bullsh tea. You suck. Shot intention 8763. Yes, YTA. Competent irrespective of anything your wife posted yesterday. YTA. Not for putting your child first, as you manipulatively try to frame it, but for myriad other reasons. YTA for not telling your wife prior to the ceremony that your daughter was coming to live with you. In fact, YTA for agreeing to that without talking to your fiancé at the time first. YTA for saying no to your wife, crashing, your father-daughter activities, and then claiming your wife has made no effort to connect with your daughter. YTA for creating this, my wife and my daughter domestic situation, and making no effort to actually blend the two parts of your life together. YTA for acting, as though attending prenatal appointments is irrelevant if you can't do anything. It's about being present, making her feel like she matters, and showing her that she's not in this alone. It's not as though you've raised a child together. She has no way to know how involved or present you'll be once the baby is born. You need to show her that the unborn child is also important to you. BTW. You might even ask her or your daughter how either would feel about her attending. If neither are massively uncomfortable with it, it would not be a bad thing for an adolescent girl to experience firsthand. YTA for calling the things that matter to your wife silly little things. Or for acting like showing her extra care while she is literally growing a human inside her body is babying her. Honestly, you sound like a selfish, inconsiderate prick all around. The way you're behaving towards your wife is not love. Love is putting another person's needs before your own. Try doing that. Half underscore genie underscore psycho. You forgot his honeymoon is some trip. Bored of Ben. YTA. Your wife is expecting your child. You have made no effort to make her feel special or wanted. You are putting your daughter's needs understandable over your wife's, who is also carrying your child needs. Taking her to one of your father-daughter outings isn't going to kill you. Rather, it will help your daughter and wife bond. Frankly, your attitude about your wife wanting you at her medical appointments and everything in between is just concerning. You are making no effort to make your wife comfortable and, more importantly, at peace. Grow up and act like a husband for once too. OP. I married her. Right away. Most men walk away. Bored of been. And what did you do after that? Let her be on her own and not pay attention to her at all. OP, you are treating me like I'm a monster and captured the princess. Lol, we love each other. Just because I have boundaries and expectations doesn't mean I'm a monster. Bored of been. If you loved each other, you would have made the effort of understanding what your wife is going through with or without the pregnancy. 
But then again, your comment history shows the kind of person you are. It's best for your wife to move on from you because you clearly don't have the maturity to be a decent husband. OP. I do love her and the baby she is carrying. Our problem is she likes to be treated like a child and competes with my daughter. I expect her to act like an adult. I saw people tell her in her post to murder my baby. No, she is not getting an abortion. Reddit is toxic sometimes. Judgment. YTA. Update. One day later. I haven't slept all night. It's 7 in the morning in Toronto now, and I'm a mess. I thought I'd give you an update. Some of you called me a troll because you couldn't believe what an insensitive jackarse I was. Well, you weren't wrong. Here's the update. My wife texted me yesterday, saying she found a new place and is planning to talk to a lawyer soon. She asked when she could come by to pack her stuff. I was floored. I thought she was kidding or trying to scare me. But she wasn't she was very serious. She came over with her coworker, Jen. I asked her if she could please stay and talk. Then I'd give her a ride back to her coworker's place later. Her coworker gave me the dirtiest look and left. We talked for hours. I'm a monster and a crappy husband. She generally has anxiety, and pregnancy made it worse, and she's been dealing with it alone. Apparently, there was a scare during an ultrasound, and she had a full-blown panic attack. She said she was so lonely that the ultrasound tech and nurses had to help her out. Luckily, further testing showed that the baby is fine. I felt sick to my stomach picturing her alone and having a panic attack. I asked her why she didn't tell me. She said she had asked me many times to come, but each time I either called it stupid or made fun of her for being a big baby. She said while she was waiting for the further testing results, she was so anxious that she was throwing up all the time. I lived with her, yet I was so full of myself I didn't even notice. I begged her to come back. She said she can't at this time because of her mental health. I asked if I could come to the appointments from now on. She said, of course. We're going to see a marriage counselor as soon as possible. She said she'll only move back when the counselor says she's ready because, at this point, she's not. I asked if I could still take her out on date nights. She looked at me and asked if I was just doing this to expect us ex afterward and trick her into coming back. I swore that I would drop her off at her place every time no sleepovers and no expectations. Just dinners, talking, and doing activities like when we were dating. She smiled. She asked about my daughter. And I told her she missed you. She said, no, she doesn't. She doesn't even know me. I admitted she was right. I told her I messed up, and that hopefully, when she's ready, she can join us on some outings. She said, yeah, maybe. I drove her back to her coworker. So folks, as Doug Ford says to summarize, I stayed awake all night. I'm disgusted by my actions. So that's the update as of now. My wife has left me for now, and I'm skating on very thin ice. Hopefully, I'll have more positive updates soon. P.S. I admitted I was a selfish post. I have been getting DMs suggesting to kill myself or hope my wife miscarry so she would be free. I'm going to stop replying. Comments. Cats don't lift weights. I just caught up with the rest of the posts. And if this is a true story, she made the right decision and should divorce you. During those posts, you said nothing good about your wife. All you did was complain about her. You even went after education and degraded her career. You come off as the type of person who has no compassion, empathy, or any real emotions. You fake them for what you want. You don't even think your wife needs you at doctor appointments or cares enough about your future child to go. It's emotionless. You just string people along to do what you want. If you can't balance a daughter and a wife now, then you'll do an even worse job when her baby is born. Why should it be called your baby when you do nothing for your wife? Who is currently carrying that baby? She made a big mistake by allowing you to steamroll her into a quick marriage that you don't have respect for. I just hope that she doesn't fall into the trap of giving another chance. Because we all know that people like you don't change. You'll fake change enough for a few months. And then once you feel you have her back again, you'll go right back to non-stop disrespecting her. That's a story as old as time. Lily underscore the underscore jellyfish. Biggest narcissist ever. That age gap too. Narcs love that power imbalance. I'm looking forward to seeing this one circulate the internet podcasts. Bored of bin. You still are taught. You weren't the only one disgusted by what you wrote. The post and the responses that followed only had one thing in common. Me and I. My house, my expenses, my daughter, my rules, my this, my that. Never once did you talk about your wife in an equal partner sense of a way. Even though your wife knew about your daughter, you sprung her on her. Never once did you find it right to discuss with her first. 
her life was going to be impacted by it too. She made every attempt to be close to your daughter, which was stonewalled by you. You dismissed your pregnant wife's concerns as being jealous and a baby competing with your daughter. The fact that you were so ignorant of your wife's pleas that you totally sent her into a downward spiral. Despite all of this, your wife is still willing to give you a chance. That right there tells you what an amazing person she is. I hope, for your sake, you have changed because if you haven't, then God will help you. Boo Boo 97 He hasn't changed. He's still lying to her. I hope the wife takes him to the cleaners in the divorce. Hopefully he'll be honest with the next one that all she is, is his bang maid nanny. And that she needs to make sure her BC never fails, because he isn't going to take care of her, or the kid. Judgment. Still YTA. My final update. As I promised my wife, I post one last update and delete my account. Sorry for not posting after dinner. I met my wife for dinner, and she looked beautiful as always. She asked about my day, and I showed her my phone as the Reddit notifications kept coming in. She told me to just delete everything, saying these were some horrific, judgmental messages. She said she had read all my comments and was happy she deleted her account because it was affecting her mental health. She then told me about a weird SX dream she had, and I couldn't stop laughing. She asked me if I thought our baby would be a boy or a girl. I told her I didn't know much about pregnancy. She laughed and said, True, I'm going to give you some of my books to read. I said thank you, and I will. She went over the list of expectations I made, explained some things, and then changed some stuff. I told her I really appreciated her feedback, and that I knew it wasn't her job to help me. She looked at me and said, Are you kidding me? When I asked for her opinion, I told her I really liked it. It felt like the old you I wasn't invisible anymore. She said that once we got married, she felt suffocated. She never felt like this was our home because I treated her like a house guest. She said it was never our home. It was mine, and she was just living there. She wasn't involved in any of the house decisions, and never really unpacked because I liked the house the way it was. I told her she was right, and that I was wrong for saying it was my house, and making decisions for everyone. I apologized for making her feel suffocated. She said she has known me for eight years, and knows I can change back to the person I used to be the person she fell in love with. I was embarrassed and quiet. She suggested I talk to a therapist about handling change in my life, acknowledging that the first pregnancy, my new position, and Ella had all been significant changes, but that I couldn't just focus on a few priorities and ignore the rest. She told me I completely ignored her and asked if I agreed. I said yes, 100%. I should have discussed Ella's move from the moment her mom texted, and I shouldn't have excluded her. She asked if I was still taking Ella to Disneyland. I said that aside from the obvious reason, that I was a dumbarse for excluding her, no. She then said she wanted to go back for two weeks to see her grandparents and friends back home, so I should pay for that she asked me. She then looked at me and asked, So what are we going to do for two weeks? I really didn't have an answer. She said, Wanna take me on the honeymoon you never took me on, I said. If that's what you want, of course. She mentioned it would be the last week of September and the first week of October. Then she asked if I wanted her to come to take Ella shopping on Saturday. I told her this would be a giant favor for me, because I don't know much about shopping for a preteen girl. I said, yes, thank you. After dinner, we were talking about movies, and she went on and on about movie theater popcorn. Then she felt embarrassed and said, sorry, I just really crave it. I laughed and said there was a theater close to her place, and we could stop by to buy some. Let's go. It was so cute because she devoured half the bag by the time we arrived at her place. She kissed me on the cheek and said she had a good night. I said I did too. Thank you. She asked if I could help her move to her new place. And I said yes, of course. She mentioned her job isn't paying enough. So she's thinking of getting a second job. I told her, please let me help you. You're pregnant and it's very unfair to work two jobs. You only moved out because of the SHT I put you through. You even said this was for your mental health. I don't want you to come back because you couldn't afford to live on your own. If you need your own space, then it's my job to help you. She said thank you. She also mentioned she booked marriage counseling for Tuesday and started seeing a therapist virtual sessions who she really likes and who makes her happy. I told her thanks for the appointment and I'll pick her up. I'm glad she found a good therapist. I asked for a referral from my GP and hope I'll find a good one too. Anyway, eventually, we were done sitting in the car talking. She kissed me on the cheek again, and then left. Comments. Bored of Ben. You still are an arsehole. A massive one that.
What is painful is that your wife can't see through the toxic human that you are. Your wife is a saint. If she really has forgiven you. There are very few people in this eternity who do not deserve a second chance. You are one of them. I have a hard time believing all of this. No way can a person do 180 in a night after reading the comments on Reddit. This is very hard to believe. You showed your wife the comments on Reddit, which seems sus. Her deleting the account also seems suspicious. For your wife's, unborn child's, and your daughter's sake, I want to believe you have changed or are willing to change, but I find it difficult. Tinitarantamer. If this is real, and this update makes me think it's not. This flip switching 180 is actually terrifying. Dude goes from being absolutely indifferent to his wife to devoted. The same way he did with his, once a year daughter. The one he had with a lady who skipped town as soon as she found out she was pregnant. Groom's dirty shirt is absolutely love bombing. Deba Coleman 1010. Awa. He left as he knew, we're not going to believe the BS. To bad his wife does. Judgment. Still YTA. Second story. Abusive, insecure boyfriend called me a W for receiving flowers from a homeless person. He gifted them for my birthday and shattered my phone before breaking up with me. Now he's begging for a second chance. My birthday was a couple of days ago, and I haven't spoken to him since. I am heartbroken about this. I was walking home with my boyfriend, and we passed a group of homeless people. One of them said, Here you go. I miss you since you're the first woman who walked by and gave me a dead flower. It was around 10 p.m., and my birthday was at midnight, so it kind of felt special to me. I said thank you so much and kept walking. My boyfriend didn't say anything, so I didn't think anything was wrong. I took my phone to take a video of the flower and tell my friend what just happened, and he tried taking my phone. I was laughing and asked what he's doing, and he didn't answer. He just kept walking next to me. He looked a little annoyed, but I still wanted to get a video with the flower, so I pulled my phone out again. This time, he hit my hand really hard and made me drop my phone on the concrete. My phone screen is completely broken. Luckily, it's the screen protector, but still, it's all shattered. I screamed. Why did you do that? And he took my flower and threw it on the road. He said that's what I get for embarrassing him like that. I was tearing up because 1. He broke my phone. 2. He threw my flower away. 3. I couldn't understand what I did wrong. He made me delete the video with a flower in front of him. And we walked in silence the rest of the time. At home, I blew up at him. I was crying and screaming, asking him why he did that. Literally an hour before my birthday, he said. How would you feel if a girl just came up to me in front of you to give me a flower, I said. If it were the same homeless woman that you see almost every day when you walk in your neighborhood, I wouldn't mind. We have walked by this specific man plenty of times. He called me a liar, then said I was manipulative to try to invalidate his feelings when I was blatantly disrespecting him in front of other men. I don't understand how it's disrespectful. I wasn't even going to keep the damn thing. It was a dead flower. I just thought it was cool because that had never happened to me, especially two hours before my birthday. He said a bunch of stuff. Basically that I was an attention W. I was sobbing. It was already my birthday, and I felt like SHT. We went to sleep without talking, and the next morning he was gone. I had a brunch with my friends, so I had my mind distracted for a couple of hours, but it was still in the back of my mind. I still don't know who's 100% in the wrong here. Maybe I shouldn't have accepted the flower, but I honestly saw it as an innocent thing. He still won't talk to me. Even his siblings wished me a happy birthday, but he hasn't yet. I don't know what to do. I don't want to lose my boyfriend over a flower. Comments. Spare mushrooms. Yes. You do want to lose your boyfriend over a flower. There will not be a better excuse for you to separate yourself from this insecure maniac. Update. Three days later. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for all the help. I broke up with him. To be honest, I still love him. And I'm trying to cut off all communication because I know that if he contacts me again, I'll most likely go back. I literally made a list of all the reasons why he stinks, and I try to read it every time I want to text him. Here's the update. He surprised me with my favorite flowers and a letter. He wished me happy birthday and apologized for his reaction. He said he was being immature, and it won't happen again. He said we should work on communicating each other's boundaries better. He also apologized for ghosting me for a few days. He said he just needed some time to cool down. Not going to lie, I just wanted my boyfriend back. So I accepted the apology under the condition that he will never do anything like that again. He swore in his life that he'd never make me cry ever again.
I genuinely saw a shift in his personality. He was even better than when I first fell for him. Like one time, we were cuddling and talking about our relationship. He literally started crying while professing his love to me. He said that he knows that sometimes he gets frustrated over little things, but it's because he loves me so much and he's terrified to lose me. He shared so many things about his past he had never opened up to me before, so it really felt like the relationship grew stronger. We went to the beach as a little birthday celebration for me with his friends. We were six in total, and I was the only girl. Two other girls were supposed to come too, but they had work. I didn't know that until I asked one of the guys, and he told me. Long story short, he got mad at me for wearing a bikini. He was like, WTF, do I look like having my girl walk around half-naked like a hoe in front of everyone? I reminded him that we're at the beach and a lot of people wear bikinis at the beach. He said that it's different because I'm the only girl here with five guys and it makes me look bad. I said I didn't care and went back to everyone. After a little while, he pulled me to the side again. He called me names and said that one of his friends obviously wants to F me, but I'm too effing dumb to see it. He said he overheard him, I don't think this is true, but I don't know. He was very angry, but also he had been drinking so it could explain his irrationalness. I started crying, then went home because I didn't want people to see me like that. He was being so weird. I don't know why he was being aggressive all of a sudden, like before the flower incident. He had never used that kind of language with me, especially in public. He came over that night to talk about what happened. I was so hurt. I honestly thought we had grown closer. We both explained our side of the situation. I told him I wasn't trying to get anyone's attention by wearing a bikini, and I can kind of understand his point of view, because I was a little uncomfortable too, being the only girl there. He said I could have put my clothes back on, but I had to stay in a bikini. He said I looked like a hoe waiting to get F-ed when I was laying on my stomach tanning. I can't really remember what he said after that. I was just so hurt. We were going in circles, so we decided to just go to bed. He then tried to initiate sex, which just pissed me off. I said no every time. I heard him say something about me being an annoying arse bee under his breath, and that was the last straw. I kicked him out and broke up with him. It wasn't easy. He was crying and screaming the whole time. He even punched a wall in my room. I was terrified. I never thought he could do that. We had never fought like that before. He finally left when I dialed 911 and threatened to call. I don't know why I still love him so much. I understand his reactions, knowing his past and what he's been through, and it's a lot, trust me. I know it's not an excuse, but it's still an explanation, right? Anyway, it's over now. Half of my stuff is still at his house. I don't even want to think about it right now. He's blocked. I am really trying to villainize him in my mind so I can move on. But it's hard when all I can think of is the amazing moments we shared. Like how he was crying in my arms, telling me he loves me more than life. The day he asked me to be his girlfriend. Or the day he gave me a promise ring. Maybe I did go wrong somewhere. It's just so crazy to think that all of this could have been avoided if I hadn't accepted the flower. Also, I am very aware that I'm dumb for thinking that he could change so quickly. I just wanted my boyfriend back. Thank you again everyone, for the advice. Comments. Ladbuxel at 1. You did the right thing, and I am proud of you. He is violent and abusive, and you simply cannot afford to go back. All those special moments. The crying in your arms, the declarations of love. That was him convincing not only you but himself. Why? Because he wants your forgiveness, sure. But what he really wants is to confuse you and convince you both he's not capable of abuse. But that's a lie. And now you see the lie. OP. Wow, I am screenshotting this. Thank you so much. Molimji. All of the nice stuff. All the declarations of love, the intimacy, the romance, all of it was a lie. When you think about the sweet stuff, Recall his voice calling you names. He said those things after apologies and promises. You can never trust this man again. Variegate Jennifer. He's an abuser, and you're wrong as hell for going back to him. Please don't do it again. I have a sick feeling you will, but please don't. My ex-husband was like your boyfriend, and I almost didn't live through it. You don't know what you don't know. Please, God, listen to the rest of us. OP, I am really trying not to, I promise you. Update. 13 days later. Hey everyone. I think this is the final update on the situation. I'm ashamed to admit it. But I went back one more time. I know it was a stupid choice. It's hard to explain it's like he has a hold on me. At first, it was just about the SX, nothing more. We didn't want to completely cut each other off. 
but I didn't want to officially get back together or start meeting new people, so we agreed this would be the best option. And for a while, it actually worked. After the fifth or sixth time, we decided to try getting back together, but to do it right this time. I laid out my boundaries. No yelling, no cursing at me, no hitting, no going through my stuff, and being respectful. I made it clear that if he crossed any of these lines, I would leave him. I told him I wasn't his emotional punching bag, and that just because he's been through a lot doesn't mean he can take it out on me, especially since I've never treated him that way. He agreed to everything and shared his own boundaries with me. No yelling, being respectful, modesty, and not going through his stuff. I also read some comments about how punching a wall can be the first step to punching someone, so I told him that could never happen again. He agreed and even booked a therapy appointment. He's really committed to self-improvement anger and impulsiveness are his only real issues. We both wanted this to work. Our anniversary is coming up, and I didn't want to break up right before it. Things were going fine until he sent me a screenshot of my post and accused me of exaggerating everything, basically calling me a liar. I'm attaching some screenshots because to this day, I still don't understand why he was saying all that. I got mad and called him, and we ended up screaming at each other on the phone. I felt like he was making everything about himself again and dismissing my feelings because he was embarrassed. He came over with my stuff and broke up with me, insulting me the whole time. I didn't want things to end like that, so I asked him to stay and talk. Long story short, we ended up screaming at each other again, and he broke my MacBook. I'm so done. Luckily, I'm not going to school this semester, so I won't really need it. But he still broke it, like what the F. I'm reading the book that was recommended to me and it's hard to accept that my boyfriend is one of those people. I'm glad he broke up with me. I know he's not good for me. He hates me now, and it's for the best. I know he won't bother me again, and I have no reason to talk to him now that I have my stuff back. I'm still learning a lot, like what love bombing is, I didn't even know that's what he was doing. I know I'm naive, and that's why I want to stay single for a while. I don't want to end up in this situation again. Thank you to everyone, especially all the women, for sharing your stories, and for helping me when I needed it. Comments. Homely Hobbit. Wow, he really showed how much you exaggerated by throwing a temper tantrum and breaking your computer. OP lol exactly. Hot underscore broccoli 3501. Did you file a police complaint? For destroying your property? If it's possible in the place you live in. OP, I don't want to. I just want to move on. And I have Apple Care, so it won't cost too much. Reasonable Garden 839. Filing a complaint about him now could help others in your position in the future. If there is a paper trail, a victim is more likely to be believed. I know you don't want to write this second, but I hope you will consider it. Your ex is potentially dangerous. Venice to see you. There is no potentially dangerous. He is dangerous. He is dangerous. OP. File a report. What if he harms another woman in another relationship with him? If you file, that can leave a paper trail that will help you. OP and others in your situation, now and in the future. Exactly like Reasonable Garden 839 said. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.